My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully... We both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And, wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something... Anything. ...that will prove that there's something beyond this physical... ...three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Hey there, welcome to the Skeptic Metaphysicians. I'm Will. And I'm Karen. And today we have a special treat. Ooh. See, our guest today is named Jason. That sounds special. Yeah, it, yeah <laughs> just to begin with. But I know. Now, Jason is an attorney. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Yes, mm. he's an attorney. He's licensed to practice law in five different states. Does he know about, never mind. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, he earned his bachelor's from the University of Tampa his Juris Doctorate from Nova Southeastern University, and his Master's in Law in International and Comparative Law from Georgetown Ooh, University. Right. Fancy. Not someone you'd typically think would be on our show, right? No. Uh, you've listened to the <laughs> show before, right? The twist, <laughs> the twist is that it just so happens that Jason is also a psychic medium, Ooh. and he's been providing accurate, intuitive advice and guidance since 2004. So he can help us. I... Pray to God <laughs> <laughs> on so many levels. Now, in 2017, he decided to offer intuitive guidance professionally so that he could further provide clients with a chance to gain insight on matters within their life which require further attention, just like an attorney. Right? <laughs> what if you want to forget some of those matters? Can I help with that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, attorney can definitely help you with that. But uh, by working with others to confront existing obstacles and challenges, Jason aspires to provide clarity and reassurance to those seeking advice. I am thrilled to welcome to the show the social psychic attorney, psychic medium, and podcaster, Jason Zook. And I don't know if Zook is the way to pronounce your name, but I hope to God that it is. First off, it's, a, it's, a, it's such a pleasure. And you can call it Zook. I go by Zook. Yeah. Zook. Okay. So, so do you want us to call you Jason or Zook? It's either or. It's fine. Okay. Oh. Good. So <laughs> I, I thought we had to re-record the whole thing. I, 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 I don't I don't know if I have the, the, the energy for it. But um, so we're thrilled to have you. We talked on the show before many times about the fact that uh, a lot of people who are uh, in this space – uh, a few years ago, it, it was the, just the people with like the, the colored hair and the gypsy robes and all that kind of stuff that had the the, the crystal, crystal ball. balls, right? <laughs> um, but now it's everyday people are awakening more and more. People like you, an attorney, a doctors, um, professional folks who you wouldn't necessarily think would be in this space. So your journey as both an attorney and a psychic medium it's kind of interesting. So how do these two seemingly different roles complement each other in your life's work? They were totally unplanned. And what I mean by that is as a normal person, and I, I still feel normal even being intuitive, but before I knew I had any intuitive abilities, I went to school to become a lawyer without realizing it at first. I went to college and went to law school and I'd been doing that for 23 years. So my grandfather passed away in 2004. I used to get premonitions as a kid my mom and my grandmother both have psychic intuitive abilities. My brother's even told me in the past that he's had some brushes with uh, intuition and stuff. So for me, I knew during college and, and law school that when my grandfather passes away, that I'd be by myself with no one to console me. And fast forward, or go back a second, I moved to Florida from New Jersey because my grandparents helped raise me as a single parent, my mom's parents. And so they raised me. And so when my grandfather died in 2004, seven years later, it was my premonition came true. He had a stroke a uh, couple days before. I went to Wisconsin to cover a deposition. My family wanted me to continue working. I did get a chance to see him the day of his stroke, but he was just communicating with his hands at that point. Mm. And he passed on when I was in Wisconsin. I got stuck there overnight. So the actual premonition I had about being alone by myself with no one to console me came true. But oh. what flipped that around a little was my grandfather came to me in the hotel room. Orbs of light. Looks like an unsolved mystery episode. I stepped from being me normal to me in this new reality with my grandfather crossing over his orbs of light and all that, a, a, a feeling of unconditional love washed over me in the room. I went from having my greatest fear to having one of the most profound experiences of my life that transformed my life and made me realize I was like, and so this was like wow. a light switch, right? From one yes. minute you're an attorney, the next minute you are, wah, 
ah, in a different reality. It's like the matrix. I came out of the pod looking around going, what do I do now? <laughs> so how much time passed between seeing the orbs and the feeling of love? Like, was there a little bit of terror in between? Or were you just like, Split wow. second, split second. And I bring up okay. Unsolved Mysteries because I'm like 48 right now. And people younger in your audience may not know what that is. But right. it was just right. my whole reality got shifted. Yeah. And I also had my first mediumship experience that night after my grandfather, because my grandfather said to me, son, I love you. Don't don't grieve me. Don't cry for me. Go get some food for yourself. I'm always going to be with you. I'll be in your dreams. I'll communicate with you. And I was like, whoa, OK, grandpa, I love you. And then I went and got food and like had no like no emotion about it. And one of my close friends from high school called me, Tracy, and she asked me about my grandfather. I said, oh, he died. And I could sense for the first time, not from my five senses. I could sense from my intuitive abilities that she was doubting what I was telling her orbs of light, my grandfather, you know? So I said to her, Hey, Tracy, you know what? You don't believe what I'm telling you right now. I get it. I know you're skeptical. I am too. If it didn't happen to me, I'd be a skeptic. I was a skeptic. <laughs> and I said, I said, what if your grandmother could come through to you right now? She goes, my grandma's been dead six months. I said, well, what if she came through and then her grandmother relayed a specific message that only the two of them knew. So she drops the phone starts crying in the, in the bathroom. Her future husband grabs the phone at the time and says, what did you just say to my wife? Why? She's crying in the bathroom. And <laughs> I was just, I guess it's my best friend I know since I'm like 14, 13, you know? And mm -hmm. so are you okay? She grabs me. She goes, how did you know that? Only my grandmother knew that. And then I got scared. Went yeah. back to the hotel and left the lights on for 10 years. Like everywhere <laughs> for 10 years. I always had the lights on. So that's in a nutshell how my, you know, reality shifted. Oh. So how did the grandmother's message come to you? Is it just a feeling that you knew or did you, some people hear like the actual voices? What was your experience? You know, interestingly enough, I sensed it. Um, you know, when you get a deja vu moment, you think about someone and then they call you and you're like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. that was just, that's the, how the feeling feels. So mm -hmm. I would have like these tingles, like you, you sense it. You just, your spidey sense goes off as I call it. And uh, his, her grandmother was telling me as I was just, I, I, I don't know if I channel it, connect well strongly, but as a medium, she's telling me, let Tracy know. And she said the specific message, mm -hmm. I blurted it out without realizing it. And they, they come through like um, charades. So the, I'll get sounds, I'll get images. My clairvoyance has grown a lot in the last few years. So I'll get a lot of images, premonitions. If you're still the show Charmed, it's kind of like mm -hmm. that. Sure. It gets the premonition yeah. images. Those are right. pretty spot on because I get stuff like that. And right. so oh, wow. a mixture of various different things such as that. Okay, so as an attorney, how many times have you been in court and you and you get a premonition, you get a yeah. vision that all oh, like it's, maybe the the perps uh, partner who died in the in the case like comes out and says, "Here, this is where the bodies are buried. Here's where the money is." Right? How many times has that happened? You've solved the case. I have a formal answer for this since I am an attorney and a lawyer and a psychic and all this fun thing. I'm going to tell you oh. since the rules of ethical conduct the rules of professional conduct do not have any provisions that govern lawyers who have psychic abilities i've kept the two so separate that when i'm in court i just use my lawyer skills because i don't ever want these two to conflate each other and yeah that kind of thing. yep spoken like a true attorney perfect and good for you using the lingo i am you busted out the perps that's right the perp and the bodies <laughs> buried and the right i got it I, you know <laughs> i got it but all right so um but so you you do keep the two worlds separate then yes how, how can you you just kind of switch it off when you're in court yeah well when i'm in lawyer mode and i do I, you know i started out with this 20 something years ago right but i really didn't start doing it like full time like i say part time right actually as like a night thing it's like a, it's like moonlighting but not moonlighting it's it's, it's who like I your, am, your, it's your version out. of night court yeah. And except, so what I do is even when I had my own physical office, cause I don't have a physical office anymore, but I had, when I had one, I do readings in the evenings after six. So I have clients line up <laughs> for readings without yeah. telling anyone else in the building, that's what's going on. And then I have my law clients during the day and they'd leave, but I do a lot <laughs> of like insurance stuff. So I wouldn't have to be around people as much, but it was mm. mostly remote. But even now, like I have interesting days where I'll have two podcast interviews, two like depositions as a lawyer. And then at night I'll do two interviews and it's like, Shifting the gears between the three, but a lot of people have multiple roles they fill. So, mm, true. so then what would you do or how do you handle it if you were like in a case and the victim was dead, but they came to you and they're like, he's lying. He actually did it. Like, well, what, he's, you se know? he's separated well, no, too. He doesn't allow it to happen. What if, what if she just came to him? Well, you know, I mean, can you be like, don't come? 
it sounds like it'd make a great script to a show on Netflix and something you can watch, right? In real life, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't mix the twos, and I do property insurance, so I haven't had oh, anyone okay. who owns a house tell me they, you know, in that in that setting, I haven't had those kind of facts present themselves. Right, so no Wizard of Oz, the house falling on Dorothy <laughs> or the <laughs> no. witch or whatever. <laughs> Shoo. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, nice. right. <laughs> well, uh, super, your story is really interesting, not just because of the grandfather thing, uh, but we do have something in common, you and I, and that is that we're both survivors of cancer. Yes. And the interesting thing about this is that you actually predicted, you got a premonition about your diagnosis before, like six months before, right? How Correct. Tell us that story. So basically where my old office building was i'm in tampa florida so there's a place called oh, davis God. island and there's an office space like my my old office had commercial space under it and this is back in 2018 march of 2018 i had just started my podcast around the same time i went for a walk outside just to get some air you know march in tampa is like really nice spring warm weather but not too hot yet and mm -hmm. i'm walking and i walk past the window that's underneath my office space and i'm looking at my shirt and i'm looking at my pants and i'm like just you know it becomes like a mirror that time of morning and all of a sudden, I'm looking at my reflection. I get, wouldn't it be weird if you had cancer and didn't know it? And I was like, cancel that out. <laughs> and, then I, and then I look again, and it did it a second time, and then a third time. And all of a sudden, I was like, okay, I have cancer because this is my body I'm looking at, and this is my intuitive voice speaking to me. So wow. I went and spoke to a bunch of the people I worked with and friends, and I told my family. I said, I might have cancer. I don't know how to find out, but I feel as if I do. And they were all like, no, 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 that's just a crazy thought. And so fast forward, I had suffered from diverticulitis for 15 years. So my doctor wanted me to get a CAT scan to get it checked and see about getting diverticulitis surgery. So I was planning on doing that. In anticipation of that, I went and got a CAT scan. And the doctor calls me and says, we need you to go to see a urologist right away. And I'm like, why? Well, the imprint from the CAT scan shows you have stage one kidney cancer. I'm like, what? Just like my premonition, oh my God. And my doctor's like, your premonition? I'm like, yeah, doc. I, and I explained it to him. He's like, well, luckily this is the most aggressive cancer. You'll be able to remove it. So he was already kind of giving me a pep talk, but yeah, it was pretty crazy. Cause then I, I wow. went through that transition for three months you know, as it is when you go through cancer, depending on what you got, you have to wait for the MRI and then the surgery or the procedure, chemo, whatever it is. And so yeah. it, it, what I'm surprised by but that you actually talked, tell, told your doctor, I got it. Hey doc, I had a premonition. I had cancer. So talking about crossing the lines here, Rand. <laughs> but yeah, well, it was different for you. It was. It was a little different. We were, we were surprised. We had no premonitions. Yeah, yeah. But we're not here about. We're here about Zuck. We're not here we about. Are. Me. Let me say this though, in in reference, because I know you being a cancer survivor is something. I had a cancer scare two years ago, and I don't really talk about it much. But my doctor, I had a kidney stone, went into the AR, and they thought they found another growth on my right kidney because I didn't get the kidney removed. I got a cryoblast done. And let me tell you something, when you have that type of thing going on, your, your psychology, your spirituality, your personal, everything, mental health, it all gets whacked out. Right. And you just, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I respect you so much for sharing this on your show and bringing it up during the interview. Cause I have utmost respect for you and any cancer survivor. Cause only a cancer survivor knows what a cancer survivor experiences when they go through a diagnosis. Yeah. Th th there's nothing quite like a doctor saying, yes, it is true. You have cancer. And then going to a second doctor and having that confirmed, that's Correct. the worst. Right, because you always have that hope that you know, now the th doctor, second doctor, go now nah, they got it wrong. Nope. When the second doctor says, "Yep, they're right," <laughs> your world, your th the floor drops out from under you. So, anyway, uh, so I just found that interesting that you were able to diagnose your own. You, it, you intuitively knew that you had it, uh, which which it was complete opposite for us. But um, <clears throat> so beyond that, you also had a you were having. <laughs> I'm bringing out all your medical histories, Zuck. <laughs> <laughs> you were undergoing a colonoscopy, and oh, under yeah. anesthesia, you ended up having quite the experience. Can you share that with us? Yeah, I did an episode about it. I, I don't do my own talking episodes where I don't interview someone else. Like, it's just not my mm -hmm. format, but that experience was so profound. So I was diagnosed with the stage one kidney cancer in August, almost two, uh, well, 2018. So do the math, six years, six years ago. And I went through this waiting whole, waiting period in order to get my MRI done. So then I had the surgery and then it was cancer free and I was determined cancer free on September 26th of that year. So then I had to go in for a colonoscopy for uh, uh, to prepare for my diverticulitis surgery in December. It was a great year. Um, oh, <laughs> so I go in for the colonoscopy, not expecting much. And I 
get put under. But before I got put under, I started reading the nurse who was putting me under, like who was catering to me. And I thought oh. she, she had someone die around her that was her ex-husband, but he really wasn't her husband. They got divorced, but he still considers her his wife. And I was talking to her while she was like getting me prepared to go under and telling her, your son, don't fight with him. Just let him graduate. Just let him graduate. <laughs> Oh my God. It's like, have I given the anesthesia already? Morning. My son and I just had an argument this morning. He's graduating in May, and I had a big argument about and and shoot. Anyway, that was a side story. So then I go under, and I'm in this garden again. Like the first time my grandfather came orbital light, it was like one way, but this time I'm in a garden, and everything was alive and connected as one. And when I say that, I mean everything felt like it it, it would breathe. Everything was emotionally love, unattached. Everything's one. We are one. And that's the interconnectedness I felt from that experience. It was like, if we're living in like 1080 right now as like pixels, Mm -hmm. this was like 5 billion pixels. All my senses were so, wow, it was profound. And my grandfather spoke to me and he said, son, I love you. When you get out of the, out of here, talk to your mother. When you call her, get out of here, call your mom, tell her the specific words. My grandma was very specific. Tell Mm -hmm. your mom that. Every night she prayed about you by herself and never told you that she didn't want you to pre-cease, pre-decease her. She's going to live a normal life. You're going to live a normal life to the best of your ability. She's going to die after you. You're not going to predecease her. I was like, okay, grandpa, I love you. And then I come to. <clears throat> then I call my mom and my friend picked me up. My best friend, Megan, picked me up and we got, we left the place to get something to eat or whatever. And I called my mom and said, mom, I just had the most profound experience. I think it was grandpa. And she's like, well, what did he say? And I relayed the message back to her. And I said, he wants me to know, to tell you that when you prayed every day for six, he goes, she goes, oh my God, my prayer that you weren't going to die before me, that I would die. I was like, yeah. She started crying. And my mom's not the most emotional person. She was a school teacher in Patterson, New Jersey, inner city school and very strict. And very, but, you know, I, anyway, she started crying. And I knew right then and there that this was significant and authentic and real. So I started crying. My mom was crying. I'm crying. And we just had this big kumbaya moment and you know i I have a lot of moments like that with my mom about my grandfather my grandmother you know being connected with the other side you feel these things all the time you sense it yeah it's very cool though it sounds like your family a lot of people who go through these kinds of things and suddenly one day they've suddenly they're psychic mediums uh (laughs) they they find themselves kind of at odds with their friends and family and their co-workers it sounds like you kind of landed softly they had some abilities right right but did were you aware of that before you found yours or was it an after the fact thing i want to give you an anecdote for a minute just explain my family dynamic so i (laughs) went back from tampa to new jersey when i was 18 and I wanted to go into the city to get like a fake ID for myself. I know I shouldn't be talking like that being an attorney, but that was what I was thinking about 15 years old. So my mom was sleeping and I was upstairs and I went down the steps and she goes, don't, she goes, don't go to the city tonight. I live five minutes outside, five miles outside New York city, New Jersey. Don't go to the city tonight. You're going to lose $50. You're going to be upset. Don't do it. I was like, whoa, this before we had cell phones where, you know, like right. I had a landline in my bedroom. That was my home phone for me. You know, we each had our own <laughs> And so I go in the car and tell my friends this. We go to the city. Stupid me, 18 years old, goes into the city. I lost $50. I came home upset. And when I got home, my mom was waiting for me. And she's like, you didn't listen to my advice. I go, no. She goes, when I get those kind of feelings, follow them. I was like, whoa. (laughs) I always felt like she was like watching me when she wasn't there. But that's (laughs) how our family was. My grandmother used to get itchy hands and go play at the dog tracks in Caucus, New Jersey and win thousands of dollars and be quiet about it like you know like my family had this i don't know how to explain it this intuitive abilities and so so i I gotta i gotta we gotta meet because i gotta rub off on on you a little bit because i need a little bit of that uh, (laughs) itchy hands yeah (laughs) not necessarily itchy (laughs) hands but you know (laughs) so with this ability and and it's i i love hearing you talk about the the feelings of love that have been coming through but have any shadows ever come through Mm. Oh, when you say shadows, you mean like, do I deal with like the scary own, stuff? Going through? Like my not, own, not your own personal healing, but just like anything kind of creepy. That's not you or your family. Well, I'll say this to you as a medium. I use my abilities as a medium. If you want to call it that. I mean, it's like saying, do you have great vision and can you be a, a marksman and shoot, you know, at a range or do you have the ability to go bench press 5,000, you know, 5,000 reps? It, it's just an ability I have, but I use it to focus on the light side of things. So when I work with clients and they call me for a reading, I tune into their energy. I just say every mm-hmm. energy. 
a medium, as an intuitive person, whatever, and I'll tune into their energy and their loved ones will come through. And it's usually I focus in the, in the light. So I focus on clarity, reassurance, giving people that ability not to feel so caught in grief when they know that their loved ones are watching them now. Mm-hmm. And right. so in terms of the dark side of things, I have done some paranormal investigations, one three weeks ago in Utah, where my whole paradigm shift about the paranormal changed. I never saw anything like that before. And it was, it, and we just did a video for it. So it's actually on a, on a YouTube mm. channel called Realm Tube uh, uh, called Ghost, I, I think Ghost Quest. And so if you watch it, it's one aired each week right now. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a remarkable thing because I got scratched by something and we actually caught stuff on tape, like the paranormal investigator ghost hunter shows you see. Yeah. I was part of one mm-hmm. and it was crazy and I enjoyed it. <laughs> I want to do more of it in a safe, you know, controlled way, but it made me realize that we're not, you know, our world is a lot bigger. Our universe is so much larger and more profound, even for me as a skeptic, because I was mm-hmm. always skeptical of those shows or a skeptical of spirits. Yeah. And even as a medium, I was skeptical about non-related spirits popping in and having to deal with. But, you know, when I say related spirits, I mean, people who I'm friends with, I can pick up on their relatives or people I read with mm-hmm. and they trust me to read for them. I pick up on normal, you know, when I say normal, I pick up on <laughs> connected spirits to those people. Mm-hmm. Right. The investigation, that wasn't the case. It was, it was very different. See, I was really hoping when I asked that question, you'd say, nope, doesn't exist. <laughs> but, <laughs> if it would have been in July or a month or two ago, I would have been like that. But now, unfortunately, I could tell you that I know there's stuff out there that, you know, you have to be prepared when you deal with them kind of thing. And you, you have to make sure you're, you know what you're going into before you go there crazy kooky thing is that you said you enjoyed it i actually did it for a while and i hated it man i did the feeling i was so freaked out i hate like I, the one time i went into a place and you could tell immediately that there was something in there and the closer you got to this one particular room the more it felt it was like palpable and i was like nope i'm out of here i did for like i think i did it two or three times First, and i was done i went to this place in utah and I'm telling you right now, if you were to see these, I'm not trying to, I mean, I, I guess I should promote myself, but I'm not, I don't, the videos themselves do enough justice to show when you're going into a place. And I already know as a psychic, I have spiritual things happen to me every single day. Like mm. I'll wake up and one of my close friends, fathers will pop in and tell me, call my daughter, let her know everything's okay. And then I'll go grab the phone to call her. And she's calling me about something else. And the synchronicities are off the charts. So I'm mm. used to communicating with, familiar loved ones, deceased animals even or whatever. But when you have the paranormal and it's really there, it, it just makes you realize how big of a universe we have, even on the other side. Now, I've heard that 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 the stuff that I felt, the stuff that you felt, the, 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 the weird vibe stuff, it's a lot of our own shadows that we're bringing to these kinds of things. Now, it might not be ours, but it could be someone who was there before or something along those lines and not necessarily like a demon or something like that. So just so we can let Karen sleep tonight, just go ahead and say you agree with me on that. <laughs> <laughs> that I'll agree with what? what you that, that it's just it's not really demons or anything like that. It's actually just like our own shadows, and it's just well, you know, as long as you face it, I'll, you're fine. Right? I'll say this: I've saged my house since I've come back from my trip each week. I used to sage once every few months. Now I'm saging weekly, but I find that it's a good practice to do anyway because it's like dusting. Right. You're clearing right. the energies out. Do I know what I encountered in Utah? Was it this or was it that? I don't know exactly what it was. When you get scratched the next morning and those scratches appear for four hours and then disappear and then you have weird dreams and you come back to Tampa. And you, yeah, it was it was a unique yeah. experience. Jason, but, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to let Karen sleep tonight. Yeah. You're not going along with the plan here. Well, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me comfort you with this. I would recommend saging once in a while and that should give you that should give you peace. And when you lay down, one of the things I learned as a psychic medium is I lay down, I take three deep breaths, I go to meditate a little and I pretend, I don't, I mean, I, I, I imagine myself with a, a, a ball of white protective energy protecting me. Mm-hmm. And I let that energy come from me and fill into the entire room and I keep the doors closed and that allows me to sleep where I'm not afraid of any spiritual activity around me or anything. And right. so you might be able to do something like that just to comfort yourself. Yeah. I mean, I've had some, I don't know if I ever told you this, but when Sienna, our daughter was little, uh, when we lived in the little box, mm-hmm. um, we didn't really live in the box. It was a very small duplex. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't her bridge. Yeah. No, but, yeah. <laughs> I had this dream one night and like I went into her room and there was something dark moving towards her bed. 
And I remember just mustering every ounce of strength and everything in my soul and just yelling, no. And it looked, it like kind of turned around and stopped and it left. So yeah. I don't know, I, man. I, I'll I'll Here's an observation as we talk about this. Don't we all have our eight-year-old inner child within ourselves that gets scared no matter what, even when we can be what we are in real life, an attorney or, you know, any of our roles? Because my mom the other day told me, and I was watching her when this happened because she lives with me now, and she's 77, and she went to the kitchen and she goes, will you just behind me? And I'm sitting in front of her on the other side of the room on my recliner. I'm like, no. <laughs> she's like, well, then that was that spirit. I go, what? She goes, well, there's a lot of spirit that's been visiting here. I'm like, what? Wait, whoa, what? <laughs> just pressed his arm on my shoulder to reassure me that everything's going to be okay. And I'm like, so I picked up the sage and I started saging. Yeah. yeah. Like, What's here? Because I'm not, I'm not seeing this and I'm supposed to. So, nice. But what if it's a good ghost? Well, she said it was. So right. I take her word so... for it, but I'm still saging anyway. Because <laughs> you yeah, don't want him around just in case. On the rent. Chipping towards a mortgage or something. <laughs> <laughs> in, in spite of everything, though, the, probably the scariest the movie Poltergeist freaked the living crap out of that me when clown, I was a kid. Right? Man. No, mm. but that's that's not the freakiest thing. That for was me. the worst part. The, see, for me, the freakiest thing was when she's in the kitchen, she's doing whatever, and she turns around and the, and the chairs are all splayed out, and she goes, "Oh, that's weird." And she pushes them back in, and she goes back to doing the dishes, and she turns around, and all of a sudden they're like all stacked up on the chair on the on the table. Yes. Mm-hmm. That freaked me out for some reason and i can ever never watch that movie again because of that oh i was just gonna say we should watch it see if it no, holds up no <laughs> no the clown man that was the thing no yeah that was you knew he was gonna go horror up. those two movies <laughs> well so i grew up in connecticut i grew up in connecticut so amityville was right down the street for wow. lack of a better term so when that movie came out i hated it because it's like it's like that's my neighbor I mean, that's mm. not not a good thing so i'm not a horror fan I used to be. I used to. I used to be loves being scared and all that kind of stuff. But I can't watch them anymore. Uh, it's you know what? We're living in a horror show as it is. <laughs> we don't need any extra added horror crap on it, piled up on You're right. Top of it. We're living oh a Stephen God. King script without realizing it. We are <laughs> for Holy sure. Moly. For sure. Uh, all right. So let's get back to the topic on hand because <laughs> I, I, your story fascinates me. Thank you. Um, so the what. You are walking that fine line between law and the woo really, really well uh, for for everything that, I, that I've, I've looked in you uh, to, to learn about you when I was doing my research. But how have you been able to so successfully separate the two? And And how can someone who is trying to do something similar not find themselves in too deep in one world or the other? Well, thank you for that. First off, I'll say two things. One, there are other psychic lawyers out there. There's actually somebody who is trademarked psychic lawyer or psychic attorney. Uh, oh, we we know him. I know him quite well. Yeah. Do I yes. know him? Uh, yeah. You don't. Oh. No. But. Well, and I admire that. I, I it's funny because I go by Jason Zook as a pseudonym. It's actually a shortened version of my name from my grandfather, where Jason Ciafalo was my legal name. So no pun intended. But for the longest time, I had two 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 identities going on without the two interrupting each other. And I, I, I did that very strictly just so that mm-hmm. I could have a normalcy to an extent. I, I wanted to be able to be intuitive. and it, it, it gives me endorphins. It connects me to people on a deeper level. And it's so much more meaningful. And it gives me purpose when I can you know, have a good reading with somebody and connect with someone, help them know that we're not just living in time, matter, space. We, we ascend and we keep going. That's the mystery of death a lot of us don't appreciate. That I feel after talking to thousands of people on our side, I feel pretty strongly about. We just keep going. The- Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't just say that and just walk on like, like, you, like you didn't just step on it. So what What do you mean we, we we keep going? What does that mean after we die? Well, if I was to tell you that these are meat suits and our bodies are our avatars on this planet, my personal belief from talking to everyone on the other side is when we die, it's like falling asleep on the couch while watching TV. Think of that image for a minute. Think of after this interview, you go lay down later and you're watching a show and you just zoom out, you, you know, you, you fall asleep. And then you're on the other side and then you're given a greeter, somebody who's like a familiar person for me, could be my grandfather, my mom, whoever. And that person orientates you. And I believe that we are very closely connected. Love connects us to the other side, like an umbilical cord. So when you want to talk to your loved one that's on the other side, when I talk to my grandfather, I'll go look in the mirror as I'm brushing my teeth and I'll speak to him telepathically in my head. And I, mm-hmm. I get a penny later on, or I'll get confirmation in a dream. Like there's a connectedness between our sleep, our meditation, our prayer, 
and the and the other side and they talk to us in breadcrumbs like synchronistic numbers like angel numbers will line mm -hmm. up and synchronize with a song a penny from heaven on the ground a bird a feather there's all these signs that happen out there that most of us just think serendipitous i've had plenty of enough experiences in my life that i know that's not serendipitous when it when it's authentic you'll know you'll get goosebumps mm -hmm. You know, these things aren't something you can just create or make up. It happens as a force of nature, I believe. Right, right. Um, yeah, I, I, I might know someone that feels that very strongly. So you're <laughs> preaching to the choir in a very, very strong <laughs> way. So then how do you, what, someone who is living in both worlds, how can you, what can you give us? What kind of advice can you give us? with the world being as the, as it is, people are talking about this, this big spiritual awakening happening and all that kind of stuff. But and yet the more people awaken, the more the crap we're finding in the world. I mean, the, the, the stuff that's going on is so insane. How can everything be getting better when things seem, seem to be getting worse? Great question. I'm going to give you one point of there. It, it's real. This is all like the woo woo is real and I'm in mm -hmm. between both worlds. And you know, my day might start doing something as a lawyer, but by five o'clock, I'm doing a podcast on a spiritual topic or um, having someone call me from California, asking me for a reading, telling me that as she's been meditating the last two weeks, her spirit guide told me called Jason Zook <laughs> and she just Googled me and found me. And I was like, wait, what? That's no an interesting way. story. Yeah, I've had that happen wow. so, many, so many times that you just can't make this stuff. Like, and, and so when you're asking me about being between both worlds and, and trying to make sense of it, I compartmentalized when I got diagnosed with my mm. cancer, I compartmentalized that. And I think mm. if you can compartmentalize things, even with our chaotic, hectic world we're living in right now with all these changes and things that are happening, turbulence and all we're going through, unrest, whatever else we want to call it, um, uncertainty. I've had mm. enough information <laughs> through over time that I know we're going through this right now, like turbulence on an airplane, the plane will land. We will resume our normal lives in the future and look back at this as if you, you know, you go to a party and you're, you're looking at it years later trying to remember what happened that night. Like, right. I feel like there's going to be a point in the future where we get past all this. And right. I do believe that there is a spiritual awakening going on. When you watch home, well, like a home, like a home repair type home warranty commercial, and you have an actress acting as if she's meditative and she's psychic and she's telling people American home warranty. I don't mean to plug them, but they're doing <laughs> right. where you'll see, you'll see apps for meditation mixed in on the news. I'm like, Whoa, what's going on here? We're in a right. different world than we were five years ago. All right. I, I'm sorry. I need to, this episode is brought to you by home <laughs> warranty service. I'm oh, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> so you, you're talking about how you compartmentalize everything. What do you think would happen if you didn't, if you just kind of let the woo come into the lawyer? Well, I'm always going to be a lawyer because I trained for that. I took my mm -hmm. student loans out for that. I've gone through all the experiences, mm -hmm. right? But I feel like the psychic part of me, it, I make a joke about it. If there's any part of me that has the most confidence about anything I can do, it's my psychic side. I'm going to tell you why. Because it's 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 in me. It's, it's who I am. Mm -hmm. And I've got so much confidence in what I do with it that I know that that's just me breathing. When I'm a mm -hmm. lawyer, I've got to read a book. I've got to figure it out. i got to look at the statutes. i got to do analysis. It's it's tiring sometimes. I love it, but it's tiring. And I help people when their houses get damaged and their property and the insurance company doesn't pay them, right? And that's mm -hmm. very rewarding and gratifying. I've been doing it for 23 years. But when I get done with that and then I'm on a weekend and I have someone call me grieving their mom and they have been distraught for months and I get a chance to talk to them for a half hour and we connect to their mom and she's crying and I'm crying and we're both having this awesome experience and I get off the phone and I'm just sitting there in like awe that I could be a part of that. It, 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 it kind of is... I, I call it like the, the cherry on the cake, you know, like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just one of those moments I appreciate with what I can do. Right. Right. Uh, and we appreciate that you can do it too. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's a special kind of thing, especially one foot in each world, because that's not an easy thing to do on my side of things. I want to be more in the woo, but the 3d is, is gets too much in the way. So, I'll ask you this question that I like asking a lot of people that come on the show and we get really interesting amount of uh, answers on it, but what's, it just flew away. 
Maybe you're not supposed to get the answer to that. Maybe not. I Maybe keep the asking answer you. will come from within. No, damn it. It's a really important. Okay, so you were talking about having one foot in both worlds, but for you, the 3D usually takes over the woo. Yeah. So maybe how can you stay firmly ensconced in that as well? How can you, fir how, how can someone stay firmly ensconced in the 5D world? If I want to be in the woo, what can I do to find my, my peace, my way in there? Don't call it woo. First. For one. <laughs> make it normal. It's just energy. And when you think about energy, it's, it's, it's all around us. We tune in. This is my belief. We tune into the energy. It's normal. It's part of our daily routine. And you can live a 5D experience with your own intention. And, and, and as you are willing it in your life, you know, like I could ignore people call me for help or for readings or whatever, and, and just be a lawyer. And sometimes I burnt out on being a psychic. And sometimes I burnt out on being a lawyer and it gets exhausting some moments, you know, but I, I just, I've learned my ego is no longer in the way of that. Like for 10 years, I didn't tell anyone about it. My ego was in the way, which meant, oh my God, what if my clients found out in Mississippi or Alabama that I'm a psychic? Am I a heathen? Am I going to be excommunicated from their Christmas card list in the future? You know, like I, it was those thoughts that hit me for a long time. And then I met my best friend at a wedding in 2016. Sounds like a movie. Megan, she and I do our own show called Psychic Visions together. And when she saw me at this wedding, she's like sat next to me. She's like, I've been trying to meet you for five years. I'm like, what? She's like, I heard you on a podcast and we went to college together and we we're at different times, but I'm supposed to be best friends with you and we're going to do a lot of things together spiritually. I was like, should I change my seat? <laughs> I really want. Check, please. <laughs> we talked talk more and the synchronicities just came flowing through our lives and we just had this like, whom, like profound soul connectedness. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, we, we, we have this relationship. She's married, you know, but we're super close and best friends and we've created a lot of great things together. And she was with me on that trip in Utah and saw all the crazy stuff I saw. Like we see these, and she owns a metaphysical store here in Tampa. So like we're all engrossed in these different aspects of our lives, but she's an entrepreneur. So her day job mm -hmm. is owning a shop, but then afterwards she's into it. So a short answer to your question would be not to make it like it's complicated. You, you don't have to make it like a, a Facebook says it's complicated. Make it simple. <laughs> it. Just be like, Hey, you know what? I'm intuitive. I can read things. So what? So can other people. But what do I need to do to do it responsibly? Get your ego out of the way. Mm. Understand that the days I don't read people, there's people who want to read me to read them or do something with them or, you know, discuss things or whatever it is. And so the time I dedicate away from one to the other, I try to balance it because I'm a Libra. So, right. and in your yeah. in your context, I would say try to bring it into your life more. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. So, we talked earlier about. So first of all, yes, the ego is, is the problem and I'm processing it as I'm saying this right now. So I'm, I'm distracted, but back to the question I had for you, we, we, we went earlier on, we talked about, we talked about the, I don't want to say chaos, but the challenges that we're experiencing in this, in this 3d world right now, in your estimation, you've got a lot of experience with people on the other side, in your estimation, are we supposed to fight to make it better? Or are we just supposed to be, everything is perfect because we've heard both sides. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious to hear what your take on it is. When you say everything is perfect, just can you elaborate on that so I can understand your question better? Like everything is happening for a reason the in the, the exact way it's supposed to. All the challenges are there for, to help you get a certain place or whatever. So just, I believe that. Doesn't need to. so that's what you believe. I do believe that because look, there's some things you might be introduced to somebody who's a twin flame, for example, and you might go through this horrendous personal experience, but there's a, mo there's a, a method behind that. It's a learning experience. There's soul contracts involved. There's so many crazy things, right? And then you can go through spiritual experiences the same way. You might have to learn certain things. Um, us getting cancer might've taught us to be more authentic with ourselves, have more authentic, deeper relationships with people in our lives, making us strive to live 5d lives now instead of waiting till later you know there's there's different aspects of how to see that and so even the experiences that we dread that we might like 10 years ago somebody said what's the most scariest thing you'd go through that you'd be fearful of i was like yeah getting cancer <laughs> now i've got a car yeah. check done that like <laughs> what's the next thing i wouldn't be afraid like i try to right. find humor in things i go through because mm -hmm. i figure it helps you know with everything right. we've been through the last five years as a as a world and yep. humor is a, an elixir it's something that can keep us grounded and can help us make light of things that we can't normally make light of, maybe. 
Yeah, very true. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, we're, we're running out of time. I want to make sure we definitely talk about your podcast because you've you brought it up a couple of times already. I think you've got two podcasts, right? Yeah. It, it's I not do. like you're an attorney and an overachiever or anything. <laughs> but you can, uh, so tell us about your shows. So that if someone wants to listen to you, they can. Sure. My my original podcast is called Jason's Look, the Social Psychic, and it, I'm the host of the Social Psychic Radio Show. And that's available on all platforms, Apple, everything else. Um, also in a, I'm also have another show called Psychic Visions, which my best friend, Megan, I mentioned earlier, Megan Kane and I are co-hosts of, and both shows are signed with Electrocast Media. Electrocast Media is out of LA, uh, Mark Netter and Peter Rafelson are our producers. And then we also have a Paranormal Universe Network for podcasters who delve in paranormal, spiritual, psychic kind of realm. If mm-hmm. they would like to join our network, we're building a podcast network right now. We have almost about 10 shows and we're trying to get to a hundred. Wow. Great. That, that's great. And, and then if someone wanted to reach out to you and either get a reading from you or just kind of hang out with you, cause you are just like right. one of those guys that you just want to hang out with. Right. Or even if they had like legal questions, like I have a website for each of those. There's a website for each of those. I have the website for my lawyering stuff at cfllaw.com, my last name. And then I have my my website for the social psychic, which is the social psychic dot com. And um, you can just contact me on social media. I go by the social psychic on Instagram. I use that the most, but I'm also on other platforms. You can find me with the social psychic or Jason Zook. Feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to talk to anyone who's interested want to talk about spiritual stuff or if you want a reading or if you want to find out about podcasting, because it's always fun to talk about that stuff, too. Right. Great. Very cool. Well, we're going to add uh, links directly on our show notes. So if you missed him saying all that, if you didn't have a piece of paper and a pen in on hand at the moment, just go to skepticmetaphysician.com. You're used to it by now. Just go there. Go to his episode page. His links are going to be directly on the show notes, either in the show notes or in the blog. Either way, they'll be there. It's easy for you to connect with him. So, Zook, it, this has been a lot of fun. You are mm-hmm. a ton of fun to hang out with. So I hope at some point... Uh, I, I spent a lot of years in Tampa. I met when we met, I, I lived in Tampa. Mm-hmm. So I have you Florida. guys on my show. I'd love to have you guys come on my show as well. And that would be fun. That. Continue yeah, that would... to enjoy. I mean, this is just, when I do podcasting, I, I make the joke. Can you imagine 10 years ago, if you were telling somebody, oh yeah, I talked about my most vulnerable moment and there was a large <laughs> audience listening to us. But if you were at a restaurant, you'd be whispering to each other. Like, <laughs> right. it's so funny to hear you that, right? It right. Is. right. Oh my gosh. This yeah. has been a lot of fun. It has been a lot of fun, but to follow up on that, I don't think I would be necessarily, and again, ego talking, I don't think I'd be talking about this quite so loudly in a restaurant well, he either. Said, he said whispering. Right. So I would be whispering in the restaurant yes. and yet where I'm right now speaking to thousands of people who watch and listen to this podcast on exactly. a daily basis. Um, so to your point, yes, that's great. But they pre-qualify themselves. Like they, they've shown that they're interested in this stuff by coming mm-hmm. to our show. So I feel a little bit more comfortable. The people <laughs> yeah. in the restaurant are like, these guys are wackadoos. Let's get out of here. Let's uh, check, please. <laughs> I've gotten those looks over the years. I uh-huh. smile and wave at them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, right. Jason, thank you so, so much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. It has. And uh, we you. look forward to staying in touch. Thank you. Look forward to it. Thank you so much. And a huge thank you to you. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing the message we're sharing on the show, do them and us a favor and share the show with them. It will help get the word out about us and it might just change someone's life for the better. Well, that's all for now. But we'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care. <laughs>